Today on Burke Make Stuff, I'm going to show you how to build the Poltergust 5000 from Luigi's Mansion. It is an amazing little ghost-busting vacuum that my son asked me to build for his Halloween costume, and I am more than happy to show you exactly how that process went down. So let's not waste any time, let's hop right in. I have always had October as my favorite month of the year growing up. I love the fall, I love the change of the color of the leaves, I love the whole like crispness in the air. It's a beautiful thing. But for the last six years, I've also had an extra little piece that makes October so amazing, and that's my son Liam. He turned six this year, and just a couple of days after that is Halloween. And other than the awesome trick-or-treating and getting costumed up and going out and being crazy like we always do, 2019's October 31st has something special coming, and that is the third installment of Luigi's Mansion video game. My son loves watching about it on YouTube, and though he hasn't played it, he asked if he could go as Luigi from Luigi's Mansion for Halloween. And now I have to build a Poltergust 5000. I don't even know what that is, so let's check out some research. So I did a quick Google search and instantly was hit with some great source images to figure out what this thing is and how to build it. The first is this one, which shows the Poltergust 5000, all its lights, switches, bits and bobs, so I know what I need to make. And the second one is this, which shows Luigi wearing the pack so that I can see exactly how it's supposed to fit on Liam for Halloween. Thinking that a kid's toy vacuum would be a great place to start for the body of this thing, I went immediately to Amazon and started looking things up. But most of them look like this. They were not canister vacuums, they were upright vacuums, which is not at all what we needed. So I continued the search and I found this. This is the Theo Klein, I'm gonna say Melee vacuum toy. It's awesome, it's really close to what we need, so I ordered it right away. And this is what came in the box, exactly as advertised, and honestly, really pretty good quality for a little kid's toy. And it looking so much like the original already, we don't have that much still to go to make it exactly what we want it to be. In my planning, I figured out that I would need four number 10 bolts, four number 10 nuts, and four number 10 washers, as well as an old book bag I'm not using anymore, trust me on this one, and I hit up the Dollar Tree near our house for one of these cheap green touch lights and accompanying batteries. After putting down some protective paper, I started taking off all the stickers and labels on the back of the piece with some WD-40 and a scrubby pad. They came off real easy, which I'm happy to say, because sometimes that is a pain in the butt. Now before I could make the harnesses that would hold this on my kid's back, I had to know where I could drill into this piece without hitting electronics or problems. So it was time to open it, which was simply done by removing the screws here, 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 and here. The important thing now is to realize that there are electronics inside of this, so you don't want to just rip the two halves of this apart because you absolutely will sever the wires. Be gentle, take it apart easily, and you'll be fine. It turns out we are super lucky with this. If you take a look, there's almost no electronics in here. There's just enough to get done what has to get done, which leaves us plenty of room to mount things or add things if we want to. Since there are two original holes that held this onto the box that it came in, I'll use the spacing from those two holes to inform the positions for the other two holes, which will eventually go towards connecting the harness to the backpack. Now I chose to use backpack straps because if you cut them right, they can be fully adjustable to the size of your kid and they can have them as they grow if they want them. I'm gonna cut them all the way down at the base on both sides and then I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife and very carefully detach them from the top. After that, I'll either cut or punch a hole in both tops and both bottoms of each strap. Being that the backpack was made for a full-size adult and my kid's only five years old, there's plenty of extra room in the strap so that we can mount it so that some of that extra padding is up against the backpack and makes it comfortable for the kid to wear. At which point it's just a matter of using your nuts, bolts, and washers to adhere each of these straps to the back using the holes we've already created, while remembering that inside is really, really delicate electronics. I also took this opportunity to remove one of the wheels that inevitably would have been smacking Liam in the back of the neck. That would not be comfortable, so I destroyed it. Once all that was done, I resealed the shell of the vacuum with the original six screws we removed earlier. For now, we'll put that aside and grab our little green touch light, take it apart with four Phillips head screws nice and easy, and it comes out in three components, a back with the electronics, the button itself, and the part I'm going to call the ring. 
We're gonna take that ring and scuff it up with some high grit sandpaper just so that the paint that we're gonna use on it adheres better. I'm gonna paint this silver because if you look at this picture of the backpack, the green light has a silver ring around it. Now this is not exactly what it looks like, but very much close enough for a Halloween costume. Now while I'm getting this thing all painted up, I wanna ask you a question. Are you enjoying the video? If you are, why not find that like button and give it a thumbs up, it helps quite a bit. Oh man. No! Oh, that was just lazy. I got spray paint all over my workbench. Ah, but wait a second. When I refinished my grandfather's 66 year old workbench, I used paste wax, so it'll come off with some WD-40 nice and easy. If you haven't seen that video, the link is above. Next, we're gonna tackle these little sectional pieces that go onto the hose itself. Now, for this, I'm gonna be using underground electrical conduit. Now, if you don't have that, I just got it at Home Depot. And of course, if you wanna use PVC, you can. You just need to make sure that you measure the inside diameter of the PVC to make sure it'll fit over the hose of whatever your vacuum is for this project. And then I'll cut a bunch of pieces out between one and two inches to use. Now technically, 99% of the time, you really should be wearing a respirator in your shop. You're kicking up dust, you're dealing with spray paint, you're making sawdust all the time. But if you're one of those people who goes, ah, I don't need to wear for this. For this next step, you definitely, definitely do. We're gonna sand down all the sharp edges on all those pieces we just made, and basically what you're doing is making super fine plastic dust. That is not something you wanna breathe in, so make sure you're taking care of yourself. In this first phase of sanding, I'm just gonna make sure to go through every piece and on both sides get those 90 degree corners smoothed down so there's nothing to get hurt on. And in the second phase, I'm gonna go back to each piece, make sure I take off all the writing and scuff up the surface, that way it's prepped for painting, which is the next step. So, so far, we basically have a wearable vacuum cleaner, <laughs> which looks awesome. It's a vacuum cleaner for a five-year-old in size, so of course, I'm gonna try it on. You're crazy, you're crazy. Because I want to see if this thing actually works and if I can do something. Oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, can you see it? I don't even know. How do I look? All right, so there's also this thing built in, which obviously won't work for me, but for my five year old, it might be great. It's this little chest harness thing that you can tighten up, and it, uh, yeah, it's tight. I don't know how I'm gonna get this off. All right. Holy crap. All right. <laughs> Let's start putting things together so it starts to look like the poltergeist. Um, it's gonna be cool. Let's get this done. Once your silver ring is dry, put the light back together the exact opposite way that you took it apart, and then put the batteries in. Check to see if your silver pieces are dry, and if they are, it's just as easy as threading them onto the hose of the vacuum. I afterward went over and spaced them out correctly and added crazy glue to make sure they didn't go anywhere, but that's completely optional. Though, if I'm being honest, I do believe that that level of detail, that level of meticulousness is really what takes something over to the next level. Say what you want about people who do cosplay and people who make their own costumes like that, but I have a huge respect for them. Next up, I grabbed the rest of the pieces of the vacuum pole and put those together and slid some of the sectional pieces on that as well making sure to use crazy glue at each of the joints for a nice semi-permanent bond. After the glue dries, here's what we've got, looking more and more like the Poltergeist 5000 with every move. Now at this point, my son actually walked in the room dressed as Luigi, so I could not help but do a fitting with him. It was awesome, his mind was positively blown. I only wish I had the sound on this portion of the video. It was so awesome. Once you know that everything fits well and that no further adjustments are necessary, you can grab yourself some AC glue and some activator and actually take the extra pieces of the harness and attach them directly to the vacuum cleaner. That'll keep everything looking nice and crisp and clean. Next, I wanted to find a way to cover as many of these markings on here as I possibly could. Now, I knew that this one up here would be covered completely by our green and silver light, but these down here just really needed something to make them cooler. On the side, I also had something I wanted to cover because, well, frankly, it just doesn't look that good. And I had this piece on the back where I removed that wheel before. Now, I know they all needed something, but I wasn't sure, so I went back to the source pictures. 
and as soon as I saw them, I knew exactly what it needed. Just some better buttons. Look at these, they're weak. So I went back to the vacuum, took a whole bunch of measurements that I'd need to get this whole thing right, and then translated all that into my Silhouette Vinyl Cutter, which has to be one of my favorite machines in the shop. I really should do a video on it one of these days. It basically works like a printer, except it uses a knife to make absolutely precise cuts, allowing you to make decals and all sorts of stuff. In this case, I'm gonna be cutting out all the pieces I need to make that button, and then layering the vinyl to create the decal I wanna put onto the vacuum. Once I've applied all the decals I've made, it'll make this look so much better and so much more like the Poltergust 5000. While my original idea to put the green light on the back was just to permanently affix it with some AC glue, I realized that we wouldn't then be able to change the batteries when necessary, so I decided to use some Velcro and put those in place instead. And here's what we got. Our very own, custom-made, kid-tested, mother-approved, Poltergust 5000. And even better than that, my own little superhero over here absolutely fell in love with it. So obviously he's completely elated with this project. He thinks it came out awesome, he's super excited, and I'm excited because he loves it. If you wanna check out pictures of us trick-or-treating for Halloween, definitely go check out my Instagram, which is also Burke Makes Stuff, or you can hit us up on Facebook, also Burke Makes Stuff. There you go, guys. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. Thank you, as always, for being here with me. It means the world. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>